I did say that you had to memorize it, and then I realized I even put it on your sheet. Recall Newton's second law, F equals M. Uh, we can already do some basic physics. Actually, we can even do some rocket science. A spacecraft has a mass of 3.25 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. Its engine can exert a thrust force of 7.25 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. At what rate will the spacecraft accelerate? Pierce, what does this question want me to find? Part A. And acceleration is going to become a fundamental concept in our physics lives, and we have many ways to find it. One way to find acceleration was to, don't write this down. Remember that one, and then get the A by itself. A equals VF minus VI over T. Uh, we also had uh, A equals VF squared minus VI squared all over 2D. That was the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Don't write that one down. Uh, we also had an acceleration inside of D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. We could have got that A by itself with a bit of complication, but we could have. Which one am I going to use here? What else did they give me? What's this 3.25 times 10 to the fourth? How do you know? Kilograms, both they said mass, but even if I hadn't said that, kilograms, mass, and this is one of the reasons I've told you it really is worth memorizing what units go with what, because now, as soon as you write this down, hopefully you're thinking about a different equation that has mass in it, Newton's second law. Sorry, that has acceleration in it, Newton's second law. Pierce, what's that 7.25 times 10 to the fourth? How do you know? Even if I hadn't said that, how would you know? Newtons. Okay. Pierce, do I have an equation that has an F and an M and an A in it? I'm not going to write that down. You can. But Pierce, can you look at the equation, which is at the top of your page, and can you rewrite it to get the A by itself? Yeah, another way to calculate acceleration, which is going to be 7.25 times 10 to the fourth divided by 3.25 times 10 to the fourth by a fluke. Do I have a 10 to the fourth on the top and a 10 to the fourth on the bottom? Normally, my scientific notations don't cancel, but by th this time, they just happen to. I'll take that. So it's really just going to be 7.25 divided by 3.25. I have no idea what that is. Should be 2 point something. 2.23? 0, 7, but 2.23? Yeah. Yeah, three sig figs would be right. 2.2, oh, let's change colors, Mr. Do, I can be consistent. 2.23 acceleration, what are the units? Meters per, second Meters per second squared. Is that a big acceleration? It's about a quarter of a G. You'd feel it. Uh, that's about what a SUV will accelerate at. So not a sports car, but if you have like a not sporty vehicle, and you press the gas quickly. You don't floor it, but you press the gas fairly quickly. That's about 2.23. You can feel it, but you're not like, ooh. If the spacecraft maintains this constant acceleration for 240 seconds before turning off the engine, and its initial velocity was 5.6 times 10 to the third, what will the final velocity? Pierce, keep going. What does B want me to find? VF. What's that 240? Second. Ah, now I'm thinking about other equations. Are you too? I think I am. Yes, yes, yes. What's that 5.6 times 10 to the third? <sighs> Which equation do you think I'm heading for, heading towards looking at now? said we didn't need our formula sheet. You might have it memorized. I think maybe you need your formula sheet for this. Where VI is 5.6 times 10 to the third plus, 
I don't know the acceleration. Or do I? Not 9.8. What? Part B, I bet you we're going to use part A to find part, but we're going to start to do that more and more for the rest of the year now. And in about a month, I'll feel comfortable not even giving you the part A, giving you all this information and just jumping straight to part B and having you realize I need to find an acceleration from the information that they gave me. Okay? Uh, 2.23. I'm going to use my answer button. I'll write 2.23 and time 240. So 5.6 scientific notation button 3 plus answer button 2.23 uh, times 240. This spaceship will be going six, uh, you know what, I'm going to go, since we're going scientific notation, 6.14 times 10 to the 3. Units, Pierce, it's a velocity. Yep. Sorry? Meters per second. What would be the squared? What would that be? It would be measured of? Okay, good. Hey, Pierce, what does uh, C want me to find? I got lots of options. Um... What do you think? I can use that one. I think I'm going to use the D equals VIT plus a half AT squared only because I find that one easier to type in my calculator. They're about the same level of difficulty. Oh, I could even use uh, the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD and get the D by itself. I don't think I'd bother doing that because no matter what, Tato, I have to use some information from part A and part B to get part C anyways, so there's no, you know, easy, there's, there's no hedging my bets or making it more likely that I get it right by doing more work. I would be, I would be fine, Tato. I would give you full marks for using the D equals one half one. I'm going to use this because this one I have memorized. It's going to be three, uh, no, not three, Mr. Duick, 5.6 times 10 to the third. T, 240, plus 0.5. Pierce, what's A? Yeah. Times 240 squared. I guess I can't use my answer button this time. <coughs> 5.6 scientific notation button 3 times 240 plus 0.5 times 2.23 times 240 squared. <laughs> Is that right, I think? Do you get 1408224? No? Don't all type on your calculators at once? Yeah? Um, I'm going to go... One, I'll write this in scientific notation because it's big. 1.4, will the zero stay a zero or become a one? Okay, so it's going to be 1.41 times 10 to the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, If you divide that by 1,000, uh, it's going to go 1,408 kilometers, which is a, in 240 seconds, pretty far. You're, you're hauling here. Okay. This sucker's moving. What will the velocity be after 480 seconds, 600 seconds, 10 seconds? This is a trick question. 1,000 seconds, sorry. Still a trick question. Tato, if I go back to the very, very beginning, it says this. If the sp in part B, if the spacecraft maintains this constant acceleration for 240 seconds before what? Sorry, 
what will velocity be after 480 seconds or 600 seconds or 1,000 seconds? Yeah. No. And this is why we have so much respect for Newton. Yeah. I have no idea what you said. You might have been right, but I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Once we shut the engines off, Tato, we're going to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. That's Newton's first. When did we shut the engines off? After 240 seconds. How fast were we traveling when we shut those engines off? That fast. And that's one of the nice things about traveling in outer space. Once you get up to speed, you don't need to keep burning your engines to maintain that speed. You'll keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. That would be an example of which law? Newton's first. That's not today's lesson. That's just to show you stuff, Kath, that we can do already. We can start to do a little bit of space travel. Here's today's lesson. Next page. Free body diagrams. I abbreviate these with an FBD. So um, I've given you a couple of problem-solving strategies. One of the problem-solving strategies that I gave you I called DFIC, which stood for uh, list your data, find a formula, insert, and crunch. Here is the next one that I'm going to give you. What does DALP stand for? Draw a little picture. We're going to be drawing lots of pictures. A picture in this case is worth a million trillion words. So it says this. A free body diagram is a picture that describes or represents the object that you're analyzing, but rather than draw the object, you just replace it with a dot. Any forces acting on the object are represented with arrows. Roughly to scale, and what I mean by roughly to scale, if you know one force is bigger than another force, make that arrow bigger. That's about as roughly to scale as I'm going to get. We're going to use Newton's laws to figure out what forces are acting, must be acting on this object. So example two says, free body situations, free body diagrams for four situations are shown below, and I've told you the net force but we're missing a few forces in the diagram itself. What must they be? Let me zoom in on picture A. Kiana, what's the net force acting on this object? Zero. That means if the net force is zero, all of the forces must be, I'm looking for a word that begins letter B, balanced. You're right. How big must force B be if the forces are balanced or if the net force is zero? <coughs> has to be. Has to be. How big must force A be? Has to be. Josh, let's kick it up a notch. What does it say, Josh, is the net force, magnitude and direction in, part, in the second diagram? So if I have 200 down in the picture, but I know that my overall force is 900 up, what does C have to be? Must be. Must be. Must be. Is that okay? Kirsten, what do you think E has to be? So what's, first of all, let's, what's the net force? What does it tell me? 60 newtons left. What does that also suggest that the vertical net force must be? Zero, since they didn't mention it. So what must E be? 300. Can you figure out what D has to be? We want the net force to be 60 to the left. What? 20. Wouldn't 80 to the left and 20 to the right be the same as 60 to the left? You guys are way over complicating that one. Okay? Don't, I don't care about the verticals and the horizontals live in their own world. Is that all right? 
So you know what? That one was so easy that it's tough, and I like, I like questions like that. You see it now? Good. All right, folks. We want 30 newtons to the right. Uh, what does that suggest we can say about the vertical forces? They must be? The overall force must be zero, but compared to each other, they must be balanced. So how big is force F? Algebraically, exactly how big must it be? Not anything. Yes. And how big is force H? Has to be. That's why I said algebraically. I can't be anything. It has to be exactly that. Whatever they are, but that has to hold. That's Newton's first. Tato, how big is G? 50 right, 20 left is the same as a single force of 30 to the right. Okay. Let's start to apply this. So, a book rests on a tabletop. Your binders. A free body diagram for this situation looks like, well, first thing we do is we represent the mass with a dot. And then we say to ourselves, self, what are the forces acting on this book? And I, I try and go systematically. So whenever I'm drawing a free body diagram, I'll say, what are the forces acting on this object? Get the obvious one. What I mean by the obvious one, it's the one that all of you are feeling right now. It's the one that holds you onto the earth right now. It's always going to be there unless we're in outer space. But for now, what's the first force acting on this book? Get the obvious one. Gravity. I'm going to draw an arrow pointing down, and I'm going to label that with an F and then a subscript of G, force of gravity. Is the book, is the binder sinking into the table like quicksand? Is it flying into the air like Superman? Then vertically, the forces must be, I'm looking for word, these letter B. So there has to be the same size or the same length arrow pointing up. And that's what I meant by roughly to scale. I would, Zach, take a half mark off if you told me that was the free body diagram. I would say, no, 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 that should be going up into the air. Or if you did this, I would, no, that has to be still sinking into the ground. What force is that? As a magnitude, but what, what's causing that force? Yeah, we're going to give that force a special name a bit later on, but for now, you can call it force of the table. Draw a free body diagram for the following masses hanging from a rope. Okay. We have two situations. The situation on the left, it's just hanging there. Situation on the right, I guess we're accelerating upwards at two meters per second squared. Let's do the situation on the left. What are the forces, at? here's my representing the mass with a dot. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. What else? Is it falling? Is it accelerating up? So the forces must be? So there has to be a force exactly the same size as gravity pointing up. What's pulling it up? We're going to give the force from a rope a special name. We're going to call it capital T, tension. Tension. Okay. What about the right-hand side? What are the forces acting on this 12? Get the obvious one. OK. Stop, look up. F equals what what? MA. You can label gravity as F with a little subscripted G. Or if you want to, as a shortcut, you can put the whole equation for gravity, which is little m, little g, because that's my m and my a. Oh, what's g as a value? 9.8. I almost started to do that on the last one because it's such a habit, but I thought I haven't told you that yet. So, Which way is this mass accelerating? I'm going to ask you the same question. I'm just going to phrase it differently. Which way must the bigger arrow be pointing? 
I tend to exaggerate it so it's obvious. Tension. Which of these two ropes is experiencing a bigger tension? Jason. The one on the right. Which of these ropes is more likely to snap? The one on the right. When are you more likely to snap a rope accelerating an object up? Which may be Captain Obvious, but here's the physics of why. Ah, this is where I was going to bring that up. Turn the page. Some types of forces. Geo, one of the forces that you're most acquainted with is the force of gravity. Some of you more than most. This is the force that the Earth's mass exerts upon you. The force of gravity is calculated, oh, how? I just showed it to you about 30 seconds ago. Kiana. MG. Yeah. That's really mass times acceleration, F equals MA, but I know the acceleration for gravity has a special symbol, lowercase g. Another word for gravity is weight. Weight is a unit of force, which means it's measured in not your mass is measured in kilograms. Your weight is measured in newtons. Your weight changes depending on where you are in the universe. Your mass never changes. Example three says, find the weight of a 35 kilogram object A on the earth or B on the moon. You know what, since there's a part A and a part B, let's draw a little line down the middle. Gio, what does this question want me to find? Find the? And another word for weight is? And how do I find force of gravity? It's up there, I've scrolled down, but you have it there. Right above. Mg, okay? So that, there's our three little chain. Weight, that's another word for force of. How do I find force of gravity? Mg. Okay, so weight, my symbol for that is Fg, and you're right, that's going to be Mg. Over here, it's going to be the same thing. What's the mass in this question, Geo, my friend? <coughs> in example three. Yep. But, and here is the key, G, the acceleration due to gravity, that varies from planet to planet. What's G on the Earth? Now on the Earth, not on the Moon, on the Earth. This one you have memorized. What's G on the Earth, folks? 9.8. Geo, what's G on the Moon? This is what I told you in the question. 1.6. Okay? You can see the calculation method is the same, but you're going to get a different answer depending on which planet you're on. You're going to feel lighter on different planets, or heavier on different planets. Has your mass changed, Angela? No. What's changed? I'm looking for a word that begins with letter W. Your weight. Okay? We can't change your mass. We can change your weight. Uh, 35 times 9.8, that's going to be 350, take away 7, is it 343? Yes? I can do math in my head. Units, it's a force. Newtons. 35 times 1.6, I should be able to do that in my head as well, Mr. Duick, I think. It's going to be 35, 300, yeah, 35 plus 0.6 times, yeah, 7 to... Oh, I'm missing carrying a one. I should be able to do that in my head. I'm embarrassed that I'm having to go to my calculator. 56. Yes, is that right? All right. <coughs> to solve force equations, what we're going to do to solve force situations we're going to use a tug-of-war analogy. We're going to imagine forces tugging in opposite directions or in the same direction. We're going to draw an FBD. What does FBD stand for? Free body diagram. 
We're going to label all the forces. And then we're going to use our knowledge of physics to decide which force is the winning or strongest force. We're then going to use the following equation. Winner minus loser equals F net, the net force. <coughs> Where the net force is equal to MA. This is easier to do than to explain. Example four, suppose a box is resting on ice and the following forces are acting on it. Part A says, add any forces that you think are missing. Are there any other forces acting on this box? What? Is this box sinking into the ice like quicksand? Is it flying off of the ice like Superman? So there must be another force straight up. We're going to call that F ice, the ice pushing up, the ground pushing up. We're going to give that force a special name a bit later on, but for now, call it that. Okay. Vertically, everything is in balance, so who cares? Horizontally, is everything in balance? Okay. Part B says, how fast will it accelerate? Who's winning? As a number? Who's losing? So, this time we're going to write it out long. Everybody, let's write out winner minus loser equals F net. Elliot, we're going to stop writing out the winner minus loser part and go straight to the actual physics equation from now on. But who's winning, Elliot? Minus who's losing, Elliot? What does F net always equal? where F net is equal to MA. I know it's eight, I don't care about that. It's equal to MA, and here's why. What does part B want me to find? How would I get the A by itself? You mean I can use my formula manipulation shtick here too? Divide by the M? Really? So if I hear you, we're going to get 8 divided by m. Did they give me m? Oh, there you go. 8 divided by 3. Two point six repeating. So let's go 2.67. Units. Because it's an acceleration, right, Pierce? Yep. Right. Okay. Example five. Suppose the box below is sitting on the table and it's accelerating to the left at 3.2 meters per second squared. Add any forces that you think are missing. Are there any that are missing? Gravity down, and it's not sinking into the ground like quicksand. It's not flying into the air like Superman, so we'll call it the force of the table pushing up, F table. Are those balanced? Yeah. They're not really going to show up in my equation. I can ignore them if they're balanced. It says, oh, which way is this box accelerating? Who's winning? Abe. Okay. B asks, if Billy is pulling to the right with 24 newtons of force, how hard is Abe pulling to the left? Let's get an equation here. Tato, who's winning? I'm going to call that F capital A for Abe. Who's losing? Minus F capital B for Billy. Elliot, what does winner minus loser always equal? Can you just say MA? 
Now, if I had given you both forces, we could find A by dividing by the masses. What does this question want me to find, Tato? F A. Oh, how would I get the F A by itself? F B. Sorry? Add, <gasps> Add F B, because there's a minus sign in front of it. And by the way, this is really the reason I showed you all that formula manipulation. I cannot predict every force equation. I cannot. But what I can teach you is how to rewrite it in any way that you need to to get anything you need to by itself. So there's a minus sign in front of the FB. So you're telling me FA is going to be MA plus FB? Okay. Gracie, did the question give me the mass? How big? A. Gracie, did the question give me A, the acceleration? How big? And it's going to be plus. Oh, Gracie, did the question give me the force of Billy? How big? Now, I don't know if you noticed what we just did. We actually let left backwards be positive because mathematically it was more convenient. In the first, way back when, we always let down be negative. In this unit, with our winner minus loser approach, Matt, we're going to let the most convenient direction be positive. Because there is no rule that says to the right always has to be positive. There's no rule that says down always has to be negative. It's more convenient in free fall because you know things are always falling down. Here, we got stuff moving all over the place. Positive is going to be convenient. Winner. I think I can do this in my head. 5 times 3.2 is going to be 1.6. No, 16, not 1.6. 16. So it's going to be 16 and 20. 40? Yeah. Units. It's a force. Okay. I like example 6. I like example 6. Example 6 is a nice question. Ira, what does example six want me to find? You know what this is a job for? A free body diagram. We're going to represent this box with a dot. Ira, what are the forces acting on this box? Get the obvious one. I totally agree. I'll call that mg. What else? Is this box in free fall? Which way is this box accelerating? So there has to be a force pointing up. Is that force bigger, smaller, or the same length as mg? has to be bigger. By the way, that's what Newton's first is saying. Newton's first law is saying if you're accelerating up, there has to be an unbalanced force up. We're using Newton's first to get the diagram. So you're telling me like that? What force is that? I agree. <coughs> There's my free body diagram. Who's winning? Who's losing? Winner minus loser equals, and what does winner minus loser always equal, Elliot? There's my force equation that describes this situation. Ira, what does this question want me to find? Oh, how would I get the T by itself? How will I move that MG over to the other side? Did you say plus? You're right. OK. Here's yet another equation, not on your formula sheet. Don't try and memorize it. We can derive it based on a good free body diagram. I guess it's going to be MA plus MG. Ira, did they give me the mass? What? Did they tell me the acceleration? What? You said the mass was 12. Geo, what's G? Remember? 9.8. What's the tension in the rope if you're accelerating a 12 kilogram mass up at 2 meters per second squared? It's going to be 24 plus 12 times 9.8 is going to be 120. Take away 2.4 is going to be 117.6. 137.6. 141.6? Yeah? So how many sig figs should I go to? I guess technically I would go to two sig figs here and call it 140 newtons, but I'd take 
Turn the page. get through everything and I don't know if we're going to quite get through everything. We'll see. Example seven says, find the tension in the rope. You know what this is a job for? A free body diagram. Ready, Jason? Let's represent the mass with a dot over here. Jason, my friend, what are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. I agree. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? How do you know for sure? Yeah. Newton's first says if you're accelerating down, there has to be an unbalanced force down, which means there has to be less force up. I'll really exaggerate it. Who's winning? 12's uh, not a force. It's not even on my free body diet. What? MG. MG. Who's losing? Uh, yeah. So my equation is going to be winner minus loser. What am I going to write? Yep. Minus yep. Did you say minus t? Yeah. Yep. And what does that always equal? No. More specific? Ma. MA. You can go straight to that substitution if you want. Hmm. What do we want to find here, Jason? What's right in front of the t? I don't like it. What's right in front of the t? Ready? I'm going to plus that to that side. Draw an arrow with a little loopy thing like that. Can you just imagine that I've done that? Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'd like to move the MA to this side. How would I move the MA to this side? There's the minus sign right there. What's the invisible sign right there in front of the MA? It's invisible. Yeah, so how I move the MA over. Okay. At the same time, draw a little arrow pointing like that. Really what's going to happen here is the T and the MA are swapping, but I'm doing the, the equation solving that you did back in Math 9 and Math 8 and Math 10. I'm saying, well, I don't like the negative T, plus it over. At the same time, I want the T by itself minus the MA over. Why minus the MA over? Because there isn't a minus sign in front of it, so it must be a plus sign. In other words, my friend, I think the MG drops down like a domino. I think there's a minus MA. And that's what equals tension. Let's see if we can solve this. Jason, did they give me the mass? Yeah. What's G? Uh, no and you'll notice in this unit, it's not negative 9.8. In fact, we decided mathematically for convenience, we've actually let down be positive because it makes the numbers prettier. So we're not going to ever, in this unit for G, we're not going to put in the negative 9.8. We're going to put in the 9.8. The negative will take care of itself, Henry, in our winner minus loser approach. What did you say the mass was? 12. What's the acceleration? By the way, when you're lowering something, that actually lowers tension. Can you see? Because it's gravity minus something, which means you're going to get a smaller answer. When you're accelerating something upwards, that raises tension because it's gravity plus something. You're more likely to break it accelerating upwards than you are accelerating downwards, which, again, most people who work with ropes figure out, but there's the physics of why. Uh, 12 times 9.8 is going to be uh, 120 take away 2.4 is 117.6 minus, eh, I might need a calculator for this one. Do you get 67.2? 67.2 what? Newtons. Suddenly we jumped from example 7 to example 4. Don't ask me why, but we do. It says, find the tension in the rope if the mass is moving up at a constant speed of 3.8 meters per second. Okay. Eric, what does this question want me to find? You know what this is a good job for? A free body diagram. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. I agree. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as gravity? Okay. 
Who's winning? By the way, I don't mean to make you nervous, but Eric has made a mistake. But the beauty of the method that I'm showing you is even if I make you make a mistake, you'll catch it. Ready? Eric's now freaking out. Who's winning? Tension, you said? Who's losing? So winner minus loser. And what does that always equal? MA. All right. What does this question want me to find? How would I get the tension by itself? By adding mg, I agree. So you're going to get tension equals ma plus mg. Does anybody see where Eric made a very subtle mistake yet? What? What does constant speed mean, Eric? Sorry? Constant speed, what does that mean? I don't care about speed, I'm, I mean the word constant. What does that tell me? What do you call it when no one's winning? Looking for a word that means, huh? Technically, the two arrows should have been the same length, but watch, watch, watch. You said it's going up and a lot of kids do this, so you said tension is winning. I would hope that you would look at that 3.8. What are the units next to the 3.8? Is that an acceleration? So I would hope you would say, I don't see an acceleration, and your eye would go, oh, what's my acceleration as a number? So then you could say tension equals, well, if it's 0, that's going to vanish, because anything times 0 is 0, equals just mg. And then you might smile, and you would say, oh, those two arrows are tied. Yes? Uh, it's going to be 12 times 3.8. It's going to be the same as 12 times 4, 48, minus 2.4. It's going to be 45.6. Yeah? Newtons. Hey, not only can I give you the acceleration and say, what's the tension? I can give you the tension and say, hey, what's the acceleration? You know what this is a job for? A free body diagram. Okay. Ready, Zach? What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. I have no idea what you're saying. Your lips are moving. Get the obvious one. That's not the obvious one. I go systematically for a reason because eventually when you've got several, like five or six different forces, if you go systematically, you're less likely to miss one. Okay? So gravity. I agree. What else? Tension. Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? I don't know. Or do I? Zach, you got your calculator on you? Get it out. Can you actually calculate mg? Can you go 12 times 9.8? Oh, so this equals 117.6. So you ready? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? What's the chord tension as a number? What's mg as a number? Bigger, smaller, or the same, ready? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? There. Tension. Who's winning? Minus, who's losing? Tension, what does that always equal? MA. Now, this question isn't asking me to get tension. What's this question want me to find, Zach? So boys and girls, how would I get the A by itself? 
<gasps> Yet another equation. I'm not going to memorize all these different equations, Alec. I'm going to realize the m is multiplying, so how I move the m over? Divide. So if I hear you correctly, you're telling me the m, the g, the minus, and the t drops down like a domino. You're telling me it's that whole thing divided by m. Zach, do you mind? I'm going to put the a equals on the left-hand side because by itself like that, we're pulling. Double check. Zach, do I know m? Do I, yes or no? Do I know m? Do I know g? 9.8. Not negative. I've taken care of that in my winner minus loser. Do I know t? Yep. Do I know m? Oh, good to go. Is this a fraction? Yeah. Is there more than one thing on the top? So what am I going to have to remember to put around the top? Brackets. Is there more than one thing on the bottom? Yeah. That's a great question. Can you cross out the m's? No. If there was also an M in the T, in other words, if there was an M there, you could. Really, what you want to ask yourself, ask me the question again. This is important. Can you cancel only if you can factor it out of the top? Is there a GCF in the top of M's and everything? Say no. So what I always taught my students, can I cancel? Can I factor? If the answer is no to the second question, the answer is no to the first question. If I can't factor it out, it won't cancel. I'm, glad, I'm always hoping somebody asks that. All right, Zach, we're in the plug and chug stage. What did you say the mass was? 12 times 9.8 minus 98 divided by 12. Do that one in your head, Mr. Duke. Oh, maybe. 12 times 9.8 is going to be 117.6. Take away 98. Well, let's take away 100. is going to be 17.6. So take away 9.8 is going to be 19.6 divided by 12. Yeah. 1.8-ish, but I'm off. 6? Wow, I'm way off. 12 times 9.8 minus 98 divided by 12. 1.63 repeating. Zach, units. It's an acceleration. Yeah, oh, this is why I told you it's worth memorizing what units go with what. Okay. Usually when I want the acceleration, I mean the magnitude, but if you said down, it would make my little math nerd heart smile and say, oh, good, you remembered it's a vector. If you want to get a head start, questions you can already do from the homework. You can try number one. Number one is tricky. Number two. You know what? I'll just pause there. Try one and two. We'll finish the rest off next class. That was a lot of me talking. I think I have a cool nerdy video, but I don't know if I left myself enough time.